My mother-in-law absolutely hates me, but she's not the only one. My father-in-law does too. Why? Because I'm white, and she's Asian, and my wife is Asian, and they're saying that I'm not good enough because I can't speak their native tongue or I don't care to learn it. Well, joke's on her. I've been learning Mandarin for the past few years, so I've gathered the entire family together for a family gathering of sorts, a barbecue and a celebration, and I'm going to stun them. Not only can I speak Mandarin, but I have another trick up my sleeve for this evil mother-in-law. I'm 32 and male, and I've been married to Annie for 10 years now, and we're still as much in love as when we first met. Which I agree is slightly nauseating for other people to see sometimes. She's truly the love of my life, and I could not imagine how I would cope without her. We have a 9-year-old son, Zach, who's a bright kid, loves sports, but is also really good academically. We were extremely lucky with him as he's a good kid and has been a joy to raise. Obviously, he had some tantrums, sulky periods, and life's not fair moments as every child does. But he's never been a cause for concern. We had hoped for a larger family, but when Annie was pregnant, she was really poorly and just spent a lot of her pregnancy in the hospital because she had extreme morning sickness that never wore off. And so they had to make sure she was getting enough nutrients and fluids to keep both her and the baby healthy. It was a worrisome time, as we had a couple of scares with Zach's heartbeat, but we were lucky, and he was born healthy. Annie recovered well, but the doctors said it may happen with every pregnancy. So, we would have to be aware and be prepared to take action again. When Zach was eight months old, we decided that we would rather have Annie healthy, and we had a healthy son, so that was enough for us. I went to have the operation, so we could not worry about oopsies, as it's less invasive than if Annie had the female version done, and all was good. I did get a bit of a stick from friends, brothers, Daniel, and my dad. Chris, uh, about being a beta male now, but it was all fun games, they're, they're great supportive people, and we have a relationship built on making fun of each other anyways. My mother, Dawn, and sister-in-law, Kate, soon put them in their place. We have strong women in this family who do not take rubbish from their men. Now, we've come to Annie's family who hate me. Well, maybe hate is a strong word. I guess tolerating me would be better as they're extremely passive-aggressive about how much I disappoint them as a husband to their daughter. You see, Annie is of Asian descent and her family believes that it's important to stay within your cultural group for marriage, as they don't believe that an outsider will make an effort to learn about their culture or language or even respect their ideals. It's not true, but they're very stuck in their ways. When Annie and I first get together while lest we were at university, I saw the look of horror in my mom May's eyes, I truly think that she thought Annie was trying to be rebellious by bringing a white boy home. Annie changed her name to a more Western name when she went to university, which is quite common, I hear, and her parents were angry about it. They refused to call her Annie and always use her birth name, Kai Hong, which is fine. For clarity, I will stick to using Annie throughout this as it'll be confusing to use both her names. When Zach was born, Annie's parents actually did not want us to give him a name that was common in their family as he was not fully Asian. They were fine when we picked Zach and then a more Asian middle name. Annie's brother Lee is married to a friend of Annie's who is Asian and so he's seen as much less of a troublemaker. Lee's a great guy and thinks that his parents live in the past, but we told him to keep the peace with them please. He has a son and a daughter who we see often as Annie wanted to ensure that Zack had the best of both cultures, and he's fluent in both Chinese and English. Which is good, as his grandparents like to only speak Mandarin at home, and he would be left out if he did not understand. I have a secret and that I understand them, but I've never let on that I've been learning the language for a decade now, while well, I've been married to their daughter. I know every nasty comment Annie's mother makes about me, but she thinks I'm oblivious. The problem I now have is that Zack is starting to notice it all. 
he's more and more aware that his grandparents do not treat him the same as their other grandchildren, and he can understand why his grandparents are saying about his father and my family. I told him a while ago that I did not want his grandparents to know that I understood them, and he has agreed to that. He's also aware that they call him names because he's mixed. Zack actually looks more like Annie than me, so I thought that would be enough for her parents. I've never met a couple so caught up in being cruel to others. I don't even think it's about race, to be honest. I think it's just what they are, a bitter couple of people that their daughter is marrying a white guy. It just gave them something to use against her. Annie tells me often that when she was growing up, nothing was ever good enough for them. So, the issue that I want to ask about, a family event that we have coming up soon. Zack and his cousin Benji have birthdays pretty close to each other, and we want to have a joint birthday party for them at my parents' house. As, you know, they have a huge garden. The plan would be to have a bouncy house, party games, a barbecue, and just a really fun family event. We're inviting Lee and his family, and well, Annie feels that we cannot leave her parents off the invitation list. I'm worried that they'll cause trouble and ruin Zack and Benji's birthday party, though. Maybe embarrassing them in front of their school friends. I'm torn between my wife saying we should and my family saying we should not. Let me ask you this. If you were in my position, what would you do? What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. So there's a quite a few updates to get into this one. If you think the story was going to end at this birthday party, <laughs> you've seen nothing yet. Make sure you subscribe for daily videos and hit those bell notifications so you always get alerted when I upload a video. Here's update number one. Let's jump into it. Annie and I both read through the replies and want to thank those of you who offered well-rounded, sensible ideas. I also want to thank those of you who made us laugh with the insane ideas you offered. Thank you for giving us a stress release. So, one of the ideas that caught my attention was to record what they were saying and then we would assess whether they had done anything harmful or too abusive. Annie said that she did not think that was necessary, but I actually disagreed. And I may have to be sneaky and for the first time in my marriage go behind my wife's back. Over a couple of weeks, I've noticed that Zack seems to be a bit withdrawn, and he comes back from visiting his grandparents, and although he says he's fine, I'm concerned that he's hearing things that he should not have to hear, and it may have damaged the effect of his mental health. He is much too young to have to put up with hearing his own family members saying cruel things about me or anything else. I should point out here that although I think Annie's parents are awful human beings, I don't say anything negative about them in front of Zack as they are his grandparents, and it's not my place to turn him against them. However, if their behavior begins to hurt my son, I will do everything in my power to ensure that they never see him again. On this, Annie and I 100% agree on, as our son is the most important thing in our lives. So, I talked to my family behind Annie's back, which I am not happy about, and told them that we have suggested and that they agreed it was a good idea as none of the family speak Mandarin, and so they would be oblivious to what was being said about them. However, my mom suggested that I should put the plan into action before the party, as that way it would give me a good reason to not invite them. She also said that she would not be happy if all this happened without Annie's consent, and that if Annie did not get on board, I should not do it. My mom said that harming my marriage to make a point would be like cutting off my nose to spite my face. I wasn't sure Annie would agree, but my mom is usually right about most things, so I promised I would talk to Annie before I did anything stupid. The same night that I talked to my parents, I sat down with Annie once Zack was in bed and told her I was worried that Zack seemed to not be himself, and was not happy, not the bouncy boy that we were used to. So, I pointed out that it seemed to get worse when he had been to her parents, and I was seriously worried about what they were saying in his ears. 
I said that I wanted to record the conversations when we were not there, and if there was nothing, then we would know that there was something else going on. Maybe at school, or we could look into that. Well, Annie was reluctant to spy on her parents, but there was no way she could deny that her parents were cruel and would not care about speaking around Zack, knowing full well that he understood. He told me that she had been keeping something from me as well. Lee, and, well, he told her that his children had asked him why Grandpa and Grandma were so mean to me and Zack, and so obviously they were doing the same thing when we were not there in front of their other grandchildren maybe hoping to turn them against their cousin. I messaged Lee, well, that night, and we talked about the situation together. He agreed with me and also suggested we record his parents through his kids as well. Thankfully, it's easy to record people without it being obvious nowadays, so with Annie in agreement, we came up with a plan to record what our kids were hearing around their grandparents. We'll be starting the recording at the weekend, when the kids have their weekly visits and continuing it up until the party in three weeks. Hopefully I'm wrong, and my son and his cousins are not being subjected to cruelty and abuse. But I will update in a few weeks, once we find out. Update number two. Wow. This blew up in ways I could have never foreseen, and the fallout is intense. I never expected things to be as bad as they were, and as a family, we will need time to process and recover from things we heard. As a quick recap, we decided to secretly record my in-laws when they were alone with my son and his cousins as we were suspecting that they were being abusive to him, because they did not approve of my marriage to their daughter, which has been a happy marriage for 10 years. I knew that they said passive-aggressive things about me, but I'm a grown man and I can cope with that. I have thick skin, and I really don't care what they think about me, but if I discovered that they were also saying things about my child, that would be a totally different thing, and I would do whatever I needed to protect him. As I said, Zack had been quieter than normal, especially when he had been to his grandparents, and although my gut instinct was to immediately stop contact, if I was wrong, then it would just be more ammunition for Annie's parents to use against me. What I needed was proof. Cold, hard proof. And with the help of Annie's brother Lee, we were going to get it. So, we started recording the weekend after we made the plan. But Annie was also with Zack at her parents, along with Lee, and so it was the usual stuff about how they would never call Annie her chosen Western name and that it's an insult to them, blah, blah, blah. It's normal, yeah, I know. That was the usual passive-aggressive comments about her useless husband who did not work as hard as her brother. Well, I do. But nothing that would have caused Zack to react the way that he did. Annie has been more reluctant than me and Lee about this whole plan, and she thinks that we should just talk to her parents. Lee pointed out that talking to their parents have never worked once in their life, so why would it work now? Although, Annie gets a lot of grief about her marriage to me. Lee gets it for other reasons, such as not working in the family business and having daughters. He was also worried about what was being said to his kids. Annie is the sweetest woman ever, and she wants to think the best of everyone, even her parents, but, well... Her mothering instinct is stronger than her need to be nice to her parents. I was worried we would not find out what was going on if we were always around. We needed to know what was said when the kids were alone, and when Annie's parents did not feel that they had to be careful around Annie. As they did not know I understood them, it was not the same problem with me. We agreed that I would drop Zack off at her parents for a visit and then leave. It was our best chance to find out what was really happening. I felt bad putting Zack in this position, but his cousin would be there, and we needed this sort of thing just to know what's going on once and for all. It worked. And the reality of the abuse was so much worse than we could have ever imagined. After the visit, we decided that Lee would pick up all the kids and bring them to our house with his wife. We could then let the kids play together while we looked at the recordings. I can't remember the last time I saw Annie cry, but listening to the recordings, she sobbed. 
Lee's wife also cried while it's Lee and I fumed with anger. The recordings were absolutely horrific. And there's no way that I can type the full extent of what was on them. The post would probably be reported and taken down. I will try and just put as much as I can while it's making it acceptable for moderators. I think you will get the gist of it when <laughs> the things I'm about to write. So, the least upsetting abuse was the things we knew about, which I heard over and over and over and over again, and I was in the same room as in my in-laws. I was a useless husband. Annie had let her parents down by having a useless husband and abandoning her name. She should have married someone her parents suggested, and such. I should point out that although Annie does go by a more Western name, she's not changed her name legally. On her passport, bank accounts, and all of the documents, she still uses her birth name. Well, I call her by both, as does her brother and our son. Her parents feel that eh, just using a different name is an insult to them and their ancestors. Lee's name is pronounced Lee which is much more common, and he said more than once he had a harder name to pronounce. He'd possibly have taken a Western name or a nickname as well, as a lot of his friends have done. It's very common. Anyways, I just wanted to clear that up, as some people did ask about Annie's name and whether she had legally changed it or not. If she had legally changed it, I think I could understand a little bit more why her parents were upset about it. We've never asked them to call her Annie, though. Once Lee left, things got worse. Lee had hung around for a while, as it would have looked odd if he immediately left after dropping off his children. He was expected to spend at least an hour with his mother when they had his children for the day. We knew that Annie's mom was the most vocal about her hatred of me, and that became even more obvious as we listened to these recordings. Her father did agree with it all, though, but we never actually heard him start a conversation that was abusive. He just went along with it. I've suspected for a long time that Annie's mom definitely wears the trousers in the relationship. I will try now to tell you what we heard, but it'll be softened so as not to trigger or offend anyone. My delightful mother-in-law was ranting at our children, while is telling them that they were not to tell us as we did not want to be angry and take away the children's belongings because that's what's happening to bad children who talk about tales of their elders. My brother's children were told over and over that they were just useless girls and worth nothing to the family unless their father was able to find them good husbands. But that was not likely to happen as they were both ugly children, and so he would probably have to pay a good family to take them. She would tell them that they were wasting their time learning at school as no man wants a wife who is clever as he, and that they were just making themselves even more unlikable. One of my nieces is quite vocal, and we heard something that will haunt me for a long time. My niece asked her grandmother if that was the case. Did that mean that her grandfather had only married her because she was stupid? The sound of my mother-in-law's hand as it slapped my niece was incredibly loud, and it was repeated over and over. My brother-in-law grew furious at this moment, as they do not use physical chastisement. And this was more than a spanking, it was absolute abuse. He wanted to go and confront them there and then, but we calmed him enough to listen to the rest first, and children were safe with us now. My sister-in-law said she had seen bruising on her daughter's leg, but had been told that she fell over, playing in the garden, at her grandparents. Our children were so scared that they were covering up the abuse. My son had also tried to help his cousin, but was yelled at to mind his own business, and that a half-breed, well, had no say in it. He was not even fully human in his grandmother's eyes and he was a lesser being and should know his place. It's a little wonder my son's been struggling with his emotions after visiting his grandparents. He was told he was useless, an embarrassment to the family, and the worst thing that happened to the family was when their stupid daughter married his stupid father. My son was then spanked repeatedly for no reason at all, just because my mother-in-law could. 
She was so sure that we would not say anything. And she had been right, as the kids never said a word. We were horrified, as they were not babies anymore, and we realized that they could have been subjected to this their whole life. Annie and I never stopped her parents seeing Zack, as we thought that even though they hated me, it's not fair for Zack to miss out on knowing his grandparents from his mother's side. Oh boy, were we very wrong. The recording carried on more insults, shouting at Zack to speak English, not Chinese, as he was not Asian. They repeated again and again that he was a half-breed, which is like something out of a dystopian novel. We finally stopped the recording as we had heard enough. Now, we had to decide what to do with it. The most obvious thing we decided that night was there's no way in hell Annie's parents were ever seeing any of the kids or us again. That's for sure. But we wanted to punish them. Punish them even more. On the outside, my mother-in-law looks like a loving, caring mother and grandmother and she's fairly well respected, but that needs to change. We agreed that we should not say anything right now as to rush into anything that would be done in pure anger. And we just wanted to make sure that when we confronted them, there was nothing they could do to stop our decision. Lee's wife worked with a woman whose husband worked in family law, and she said that she would ask him for advice, which is where we are right now. Once we hear from him, we will take the next steps and I will update you guys again. Update number three. Well, there's been a couple of messages saying that I should not have carried on with my updates until I had the full story, and maybe that's true. But this is my story to tell however I want to tell it. I felt that it would be better to break the story so that it did not end up with one really long update, which people don't be bothered to read. Let's face it, if we have all done that, opened a story like this and seen pages and pages and thought, nope, not reading that. Also, we did not have a full conclusion at that point, so this way I get to tell you all what happened in the end. A conclusion to the whole thing. Here we go. As I said, we were going to get advice on how to handle this and we decided that we would be taking that advice, but also doing things in our own way as well. I wanted to punish my in-laws, to humiliate them as much as they've punished and humiliated our children. This is where I may... No, this is where I know I overstepped the mark as I did not tell my wife or brother-in-law fully what I intended to do because, well, when all hell broke out, I wanted them to be able to hold up their hands and say they had no idea that I planned this. Not that it mattered, but... Part of me did not want them to be the bad guys in their parents' eyes, but that has always just going to happen anyways. On advice we received, we got a lawyer involved, as we would be putting legal steps into place to ensure that our children were protected from our in-laws. We were advised to also inform the police, as it was child abuse to physically lay hands on a child, especially to leave marks and bruises. It would be hard to prove this because we believed that the children, when they said that they fell in the garden or at school, and we would just never truly forgive ourselves for not realizing what was going on. My in-laws were so sure that they were in the right, and I really do believe that they saw nothing wrong with what they were doing. They physically chastised both of their children when they were young, so they just did the same with their grandchildren. And as we never explicitly said not to, they could argue that it was our fault for not saying we chose not to smack our children. All that aside, I knew that one way or the other, my mother-in-law would find a way to make it all my fault to her friends and extended family. It always was. We had already decided that they would not be coming to our son's birthday party, and so we decided to confront them prior to this. And we wanted to make sure things... Uh, that the message was received by all the extended family crystal clear. Annie spoke to her parents, and I'm amazed at how she kept her cool with them and said that we thought it would be nice to have a large family get-together, as she had not spent time with them and much time, and she had not seen the extended family for even longer. She said that she had spoken to Lee, and he was keen to join them as well. Oh boy, was he keen. He was ready to tell his parents that we knew, 
but obviously Annie did not let that out the bag. Well, her mom was happy that her daughter wanted to do this, and of course, she managed to get a dig in about me and asked if I would be coming or not. So, I would not understand anything as I only spoke English. She was about to find out that she was very wrong about that as well. She had never asked me if I was learning my wife's native tongue, just assumed that I was too stupid and arrogant to do that. I'm not as fluent as Zach, but hey, I get by. We arranged to meet at their house, and before we knew it, then invited most of the friends and family as well. This always happened. It was usually a chance for my mother-in-law to wail about how disappointed she was that I, well, that I existed usually. Everything was in place, and we turned up to a house and a garden full of people. I smiled and nodded and pretended I had no idea that my mother-in-law was introducing me as her stupid son-in-law, even as Annie told her to stop. For now, I was happy looking as though I did not understand when she did not speak in English. I just smiled and nodded and looked like an idiot that she was saying I was. To be fair, her friends did look uncomfortable as they are good people who just happened to be friends with my in-laws through work, family, and other such means. Once everyone had settled in and their food and drinks had been on the table, I stood up. I tapped my glass for silence, saying I need to make a speech. I start off in English, saying that we had something to talk about that was unfortunately not a happy thing to discuss. I'm sure my mother-in-law thought I was going to say that her daughter had finally seen sense and was divorcing me. Annie and Lee sat quietly, because this was the part of the plan that we were in on. After a couple of sentences, I switched languages, and carried on in Mandarin. I wish I could write well enough to describe the look on my in-laws' faces. It was beautiful. The full spectrum of shock, confusion, and then horror crossed over both their faces in under a minute. There were a few confused faces elsewhere, too, as everyone else thought that I only spoke English. Following that shock, I deviated from the plan. I was supposed to say that we called everyone together to have witness to us giving our in-laws court papers with a restraining order due to their mistreatment of our kids. But that was not good enough for me. I had the recordings on my phone. I played them aloud for everybody to hear. All of it. The abusive words, the threats, and the physical violence against our children. You could hear a pin drop as shock set in around the room. My mother-in-law recovered first. She starts to scream and shout and threaten us all. In the end, she had to be physically restrained by some of the family as she launched herself across the table at me. She actually managed to hit me in the face, and the police were called. It was glorious. My wife and Lee were not happy with what I did, but they came around and we realized that there's no way back for their parents. I did not press charges against Annie's mother as she was in enough trouble and her temper and meanness had cost her a lot, with losing her grandchildren and both her children at the same time. I heard that many of their friends were also going to cut ties as they were worried she was unhinged. All in all, it's not a clean end to the story, and I probably should not have baited her by playing the recording, but I just had to be 100% sure she could not lie and make herself out to be the victim. The kids were a little confused about why the police were arresting Grandma, but I think they were relieved to never have to go to her house again. So, I leave you guys with this. Am I the a-hole for playing the recording at the family meeting? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Do I regret it? Do I care? <laughs> no. If I had to redo this all over again, would I do it again? Yes. 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 I would. Because the protection of our kids is more important than anything else. Just because, well, people are family, they don't get to abuse people within the family. So this story started out as a somewhat innocent feud between OP and mother-in-law. I mean, if you guys have been on the channel for some time, we've seen a lot of mother-in-law dramas. That's not the deep-rooted issue here. It's the abuse. You cannot lay your hands on a child like that 
absolutely uncalled for, and besides the physical abuse, who knows how long Zack and all the others have had to suffer from Grandma's emotional abuse as well. I could not believe my ears, but I'm very happy that, well, Lee was the one that stood up the most, cause he was not gonna have it. He wanted to march out of there the very second he heard the very first sentence of the recording, and I was rooting for Lee. I was like, go Lee, you got this. But OP had a bigger plan, and it did work very well to expose mother-in-law for the evil person that she was. So, let me know your thoughts about this story, go ahead and drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. That's all the stories for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more daily videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button for daily ones, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. But remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya!